Let us explore the 22nd lesson, Naropa's Six Yoga, Yab Yum, or Tantric Sex. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi. You will hear things you have not heard before. They might not make sense. When confusion strikes, do not be shy. Jot your question or type your question into the chat box. Now, if you are profoundly extroverted and wish to ask your question face to face, in the description area below the video, you'll find a link to the Instagram chat. You could go there, join the chat, push the request button, and if I notice it out of the corner of my eye, I'll push my button and you can ask your question face to face. But there's a snafu. If I don't notice it quick enough, that button will go away. And then the only way for us to have our little face to face is for you to leave the Instagram chat and then rejoin it. I know it's a pain in the tush, but most people don't do it anyway. Most people are content to ask their questions by typing into the chat. So let's begin. We will, oh, I, blah, blah. I'm going to open up the practice text or sadhana if you prefer Sanskrit. And as you can tell, this is written in a Word document. When you download this from the download page, whose link can be found in the description area below the video, it'll be a PDF. A PDF that was actually designed to be read upon the sm one smartphone held horizontally. This is super important. Download a free copy of the Kindle app. Use it to open up the PDF. When it asks you if it, if, whether or not to open it up as a Kindle app or a PDF app, choose a PDF app for ease of navigation and for bookmarking. The recommended reading for this class are the 31st through 36th passages of Tantra's Treasure of Raktatare, which of course is available for free download. This is most people's favorite class. Naropa's Six Yoga of Tantric Sex, known as Karma Mudra in Sanskrit or Yabhyum in Tibetan. So, this requires some discussion. First of all, I'm going to teach this class with the assumption that you've attended the class for Naropa's first yoga of inner heat or tumo. If you haven't, it'll make much more sense if you go back and watch that video. This video isn't going anywhere. Come back and watch this video after you've seen that. What I recommend is watch the uh, Naropa's first yoga video one night and then wait 16 hours, you know, and then the next night or the next day see this one. It'll make more sense, but you don't have to. I'm not the Dharma police. It's not my job to make you do anything. So let's talk about tantric sex. There is Taoist tantric sex. There is Hindu tantric sex. There is Buddhist tantric sex. Each one is different. Most of the tantric sex manuals are written from either the neo-Daoist point of view or the Hindu point of view. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the neo-Daoist or the Hindu, but they are different. 
the techniques and the goals and the methods and the sensibilities of the Neo-Taoist are not those of the Hindu, are not those of the Buddhist. So, in the, I'm going to teach from the perspective of Buddhist Tantra. Now, I'm sure you've noticed the statue behind me, uh, two, two um, folks having a very good evening. That's the classic Yabyum pose. We also see it on the page in front of us with uh, Red Tara having a very good time of it. In the tantric literature, that's called sporting with her consort. What a lovely turn of phrase. Now, there is a myth in American hippie style tantra, which is based loosely on Hindu tantra, that you can come your way to nirvana. You can come your way to enlightenment. If you just come hard enough and there's a special type of orgasm, you'll be a Buddha. Well, that's, that's not the Buddhist teachings. So, I'm going to recommend an excellent book. It's written down actually here on this page, Cuba's Poisoned Arrow by Marnia Robinson. You can order it through Amazon, either as a Kindle and start reading it tonight or as a book and start, re or, and start reading it in a couple of days. I recommend reading it with your partner. Take turns, you read one paragraph, they read the other, go back and forth, 15, 30 minutes a day. Go on this journey together. To really understand Buddhist tantric sex, it helps to have, to view it through the lens of neuroscience. There's the sex we have that's driven by our brainstem, and I like to call that porno sex or reproductive sex. And then there's the sex driven by our midbrain, and I, I like to call that bonding sex. <coughs> All complex life forms have a brain stem. Only mammals have a midbrain. The brain stem contains our most ancient drives of, sur of procreation and survival. Now, from the point of view of DNA, from the, remember, Evolution only selects for reproduction. It does not select for peace or joy or long fulfilling relationships. It only selects for the gene pool. It only selects for reproduction. And it should come as little surprise that Short-term relationships are ideal for the gene pool because they assume that short-term relationships means more reproductive pairings and a greater variety. So the brainstem is wired for us to have a very unsuccessful romantic relationship but have lots of hot sex very quickly at first and then become estranged from each other. That is how it is wired. Our midbrain, however, is, is wired for bonding. It is wired for relationships. Mammals are wired to cooperate and to have empathy. When we make love in a way that is driven by our midbrain, it is radically different than brainstem sex. It is radically different than reproductive sex or porno sex, but because of the reward circuitry involved, it actually is profoundly effective at enhancing and ensuring fulfilling long-term relationships. Now, why is that so? There is a there are two primary reward circuits in our brain. There is a dopamine 
uh, reward circuit and a um, oxytocin, not oxycotton, oxytocin reward circuit. So brainstem oriented sex has a ratio where it's prim a lot of dopamine and a little bit of oxytocin. Midbrain sex has a lot of oxytocin and a little bit of dopamine. Now, ask any professional who works in the recovery industry, and they'll tell you that addiction is a dopamine system dysfunction occurring where? In the brainstem that I always symbolize with a fist right here. So the goal of Buddhist tantric sex is not to get off. It's not number one. It's the goal. Of, the first goal. The first goal of Buddhist tantric sex is not to get off and have a spectacular orgasm. Number two. The second goal of Buddhist Tantra sex is not to get as close to his orgasm as possible and then jeté back from the precipice. No, 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 no. If the point of no return on a scale from if 10 was an orgasm and zero was nothing, and maybe the point of no return is seven and a half or eight, the point is to stay around a one or a two or a three. And you might say, that sounds boring. And of course, if we have a habit of reading erotica or watching pornography or masturbating to the climax um, or engaging in brainstem sex, that will feel um, boring. There is a hedonic set point. And if you read through the book, um, Cupid's Poisoned Arrow by Marnia Robinson that I've already mentioned earlier in the course and that I've mentioned tonight and that you can order on Amazon. It'll walk you through a 14-day or a 21-day program to help you transition from brainstem sex to midbrain sex. Now, she is a not a great novelist. She is no Diana Wynne-Jones, but she's a competent researcher and she's done some very good research so don't expect a literary masterpiece but it is very helpful and very useful if one spends a week or 10 days every night engaging in G-rated bonding activities with one's partner. Clothes are on, no grabbing of genitals, things like hand holding, foot rubbing, back scratching, you know, ear massages, scalp rubs, things that feel good that really trigger our oxytocin reward circuit, but that, oh hello Joyce, but that do not um, get us into our brainstem. If we do that for seven, for ten days, it'll make it much easier to practice the subtle sex. So in Buddhism, it's all about love and letting go, not lust and grabbing on and then getting off. It's about love and letting go. So I'm going to teach you some positions and some techniques to, so that when you feel pleasure, you're able to use that pleasure to feed our love, and to feed our wisdom of letting go, and to manage the subtle energies so that they do not get away from us because our brainstem is wired to hijack all our relationships. It's a evolutionary imperative, but not a sustainable one. I'm 
So, the per- in, in, in a nutshell, the purpose of Kareza Tantra or Buddhist Tantra is not to have thunderous ejaculations, male or female, not to have thunderous orgasms, male or female. It's to practice mindfulness, mindfulness of love, mindfulness of pleasure, subtle pleasure. Practice the love that gives, that wishes to give to one's partner, the wishes that all beings everywhere be happy and fulfilled and that are experiencing the pleasure that we experience right now, as opposed to being selfish Scrooge McDucks hoarding it to ourselves. The wisdom that lets go. The mindfulness that is able to circulate the energy and further let go. And that's what we're going to discuss right now. So this is a line drawing, a non-pornographic line drawing of classic Yab Yum. Notice that the female is sitting in the man's lap. Um, for some people, this does now this works best on a a hard surface, like um, like lay a yo a thick yoga blanket upon a carpet. That way, it won't slip out from under you. You won't get bruises on your surface. Now, for some people, the female sitting upon the thighs does not feel possible, so she'll sit upon the ground. That's a question of experimenting. Props and pillows can help. Sometimes the penis is hard enough to enter the vagina. Sometimes it is not. When it's done properly, even if the penis is just pressing up against the vagina, there will be pleasure. It won't be rapturous, orgasmic pleasure. It won't be an, an eight or a nine or a ten, but it'll be a one or a two or a three. And that's enough to practice mindfulness and love and letting go of subtle pleasure. For those who are, so what's even so even though this is classic and we see it in a lot of art, what's even better than this, according to many experts, is the scissors. Um, because it's so easy and it's just so much more relaxing. The woman is prone, she's on her back. Um, and I'll explain how people get in this position. The woman lies on her back, knees to her chest, Man lies on his left side, so his penis is at the opening of her vagina. She slowly drops her legs. He places his right leg between her legs. The result is her left leg is between his legs and her right calf rests on his torso. Whoopsie, wrong button. As we see right here. So basically, her thigh, left leg is between his two legs and her right leg is over his torso. She is resting his hand on his side. He is resting his hand upon her heart. She's resting her other hand upon his calf. It's very, very gentle. It's not goal-oriented. It's just journey-oriented. And um, as we, so, uh, so now that we've talked about a very, very gentle, easy, uh, disability-friendly position for tantric sex. Remember, this isn't power thrusting. This is not porno sex. This is not reproductive sex. This is super subtle savoring of subtle sensation. So while feeling in, in in the context of the Buddha's teachings, bliss is any type of pleasure from the very, very coarse to the very, very subtle in any part of one's body. We can experience subtle pleasure. Think about what a thrill it was the first time your partner held your hand. 
So on the in-breath, we lovingly wish bliss for all. On the out-breath, we silently and mentally recite relaxing. Let's do this now. Both of this, both bliss for all and relaxing, are recited silently and mentally by our inner narrator or our inner monologue. So let's do this right now. Let's do this for 16 breaths. Bliss for all, relaxing. If this is your first time, on the left, the phrase observant inhalation and the phrase below that, relaxing exhalation, are kind of like a musical notation. On the right, when we read, touch the tip of the left thumb to the left little fingers, lower set of creases, that's just a way of keeping track of our sets. And when we're told to count four breaths upon the right, ring, middle, and index fingers, lower, middle, and higher sets of creases, and well, as its tip, that's just a way of counting breaths. So let's count upon our right little finger right now. Bliss for all. Relaxing. Let's count upon the three sets of creases and tip of our right ring finger. Bliss for all. Relaxing. Some people are not in a relationship and they want to know how they can practice this. By, and, and they want to know if they can masturbate. And the answer is make it G-rated masturbation. You know, self-hugging, rubbing your own feet, rubbing your own earlobes, rubbing your own scalp g-rated keeps it in the brain stem i'm sorry in the midbrain um here's a fringe of benefit though if you are between partners and you wish to draw a partner into your life the longer you abstain from erotica and pornography and ejaculation and orgasm and the longer you practice um, energy circulation the more magnetic you will be to the partner of your choice, regardless if you're homosexual or heterosexual or bisexual or any sexual permutation. That which you desire will be more drawn to you the longer you um, perform these disciplines. Let's continue. Bliss for all, relaxing. Let's continue on our right middle finger. Now, the 12-step community has been corrupted. And there's a lot of people making a lot of money. And a lot of people's decisions are based not on what's best for patients, but what's most profitable for recovery centers. And that's why many 12-step organizations use a system that only has an 8% success rate, while ignoring systems that have an 83% success rate. In a similar way, there are, there are a lot of Tantra coaches out there who make a lot of money teaching things that will not make you an enlightened Buddha, but will make them a lot of money. The test of the teachings is not how popular a teaching is, but the effect of that teaching upon our lives when we practice it correctly and enthusiastically and consistently and daily. Let's continue. Bliss for all, relaxing. Now we come to the wisdom contemplation, which is profoundly obvious after 22 lessons, or I should say 21 and a half lessons. We're going to advance the left thumb up the left little finger to the middle set of creases. 
what feeling relaxing so we are not forcing ourselves to feel bliss it's whatever we're feeling boredom anxiety desire pleasure fatigue whatever what feeling relaxing Now, the first meditation, it was the practice of, of love, because wishing bliss for others is loving, and letting go, because relaxation helps us to let go. On this exercise, it's mindfulness and letting go. When people apply the 14-day pro program described in um, Cupid's Poisoned Arrow and make these exercises a part of the life, 100% have great results. Physically and emotionally, they notice an a, a profound diminishment of stress in their lives, physically and emotionally and an increase of creativity and resilience. One of the nice things about this is because it's non-athletic sex. It's suitable for people with various disabilities, including congestive heart failure. Let's continue. What, excuse me, what feeling? Relaxing. If anybody watching this has questions about how to apply these techniques to their life, and of course, if they have disabilities, if they've checked in with a physician that they respect, contact me. I'll do my best to answer what questions you have. Contact me either as a, on a, as a direct message on Instagram or as a comment on YouTube or during a live stream. I will answer it either during a live stream or during a... Um, blog post. So at this point, we this is really nothing new. This is just variations on things we have already learned. Love and letting go and awareness and letting go. These are our old friends. Now for some, <laughs> in the words of John Cleese, and now for something completely different. In the Satipatthana Sutta, the Buddha taught a rather complex 38-point body meditation. Tonight I'm going to teach you a, a shorter version. One is a four-point body meditation or contemplation, and the other is a five-point body contemplation. The purpose of this is to help circulate the energy to make us less prone to climax. Climax gets us into our brainstem and wires us for short-term relationships or highly dissatisfying long-term relationships. Pulling us into a red brain ensures not only, that our, our, not only that our relationships will be long, but that they will be fulfilling. So yay, midbrain. And once again, I cannot recommend her book strongly enough. So here is, and there are two energetic circulations I'm going to teach you. Now you've, it is perfectly fine 
to use the energetic circulation of Tumu that you were taught in Naropa's first yoga uh, five nights ago. That's 100% appropriate. This is different. It's neither better, better nor worse. It's just different. And it's worth playing with. They are both... I. I've, made, I've brought the tumor practice into my into tantric sex. I brought this practice in the ta, into the tantric sex. They're both worthwhile. So the first thing we're going to do is advance the left thumb upon the left little finger up to the higher set of creases. So now we're going to count. As we touch the tip of our right thumb, to the lower set of creases of our right little finger. We silently and mentally recite grin to gut. And on the out breath, we silently and mentally recite, we silently and mentally recite relaxing while physically relaxing as best we can. As we advance the right thumb, to our right little finger's middle set of creases, we silently and mentally recite grin defeat. And as we breathe out, we silently and mentally recite relaxing. As we advance our right thumb upon our right little finger to its higher set of creases, we silently and mentally recite grin to hands. And when our body decides to relax, uh, to breathe out, we silently and mentally recite relaxing. We're not concentrating using, we are just practicing mindfulness, very, very gently noticing. We are not forcing our bodies to breathe. We are letting our bodies breathe in whatever way our body is programmed to breathe at that moment, we're just going along for the ride. Grinda Crown, that's also known as our fontanelle. Grinda Crown, relaxing as we touch the t slide the tip of our right thumb to our right little finger's tip. Grinda Crown, relaxing. We start at your gut, always end at your crown. You might wish to do this. We're going to do this right now for another three repetitions. Luckily, we have three more fingers on our right hand, so that works out just fine. <laughs> Actually, we're going to do it for one more repetition, and then we're going to do the other version. So right now, quick like a bunny, let's touch the tip of our right thumb, the lower set of creases of our right ring finger, grin to gut, relaxing. Grin to feet, relaxing. Grin to hands, relaxing. Grin to crown, relaxing. Now, the this has been a rather invigorating one. It, it moves a lot of energy, and Chinese medicine is thought to be a panacea. This next exercise is rather sedating, and we're adding in a reference to our perineum. Of course, we're using the colloquial, uh, the slang for perineum, which is taint. So we're going to begin just like we did before, placing the tip of our right thumb upon our, the lower set of creases of our right middle finger. Grin to gut, relaxing. Grin to feet, relaxing. Grin to taint, relaxing. Both men and women are capable of ejaculation. 
ejaculation requires spasmodic muscle contractions. And prior to them, there is a tightening, not unlike a sneeze. Huh? <gasps> Chew. So, you can think of an orgasm as a sneeze from your pelvis. <laughs> Relaxing your taint really makes it difficult to orgasm, which is a bummer if you're trying to practice porno sex. But if you're trying to practice bonding sex, that's good news. Let's continue. Let's slide the tip of our right thumb up to the tip of our right middle finger. Grin to hands. Relaxing. And now let's slide that thumb down the back of our right middle finger until it comes to the higher knuckle. Not the higher set of creases, but the higher knuckle. Like you're going to snack... Uh, Flick someone's ear. Grin to crown. Relaxing. Tip of right thumb to right index fingers, lower set of creases. Grin to gut from the top. Relaxing. Advance the right thumb to the middle set of creases. Grin to feet. Relaxing. Grin to taint, relaxing. That's right, folks, sex ain't for the faint of heart. In Frank Herbert's Dune, he referred to the intimate indelicacies of lovemaking. <laughs> As we advance the tip of our right thumb to the tip of our right index finger, grin to hands, relaxing. We slide the tip of our right thumb over our right index finger until we come to the higher knuckle. Not the higher set of creases, but the higher knuckle. Grin to crown, relaxing. So you don't want to do this nonstop for an hour. I like, I like four circuits. I think first four circuits is good. And now we return to our old friend, spontaneous awareness meditation. So let's advance our left thumb upon our left little finger to that left little finger's tip. And now let's count 16 breaths, just like we've been doing for weeks now. Notice this, relaxing, and this is whatever. It could be a circumstantial, it can be external, it can be internal, it could be pleasurable, it could be painful, it could be glorious, it could be grotesque. It could be a sensation, a flavor, a scent, a sight, a sound. It could be an emotion, an intention, a thought, an, a, a recollection, or an imagining. Whatever we notice. No need to analyze, no need to label. Simply recite, notice this relaxing. Padma Sambhava, who helped bring Tantric Buddhism to Tibet, was a big fan of Tantric sex. Many of the Mahasiddhas of India and Tibet had tantric partners. Notice this, relaxing.
I'd like to do now is jump back in the text or forward, this is also confusing, to something I've already read to you many weeks ago. I'd like to read to you it again. One cannot gaze at an image of Droma Mormo Yabyum without noticing that she is sporting in tantric union. Just as the Baskin Robbins franchise of ice cream parlors claims to offer 31 flavors, likewise there are many flavors of sexual tantra. As with all things, there are also patriarchal as well as matriarchal takes on what the Buddhist tantrikas refer to as karma mudra in Sanskrit, or yabyum, if you prefer Tibetan. In the book, Keep Its Poisoned Arrow, the author, Marnia Robinson, does an outstanding job explaining the, favor, the flavor of sexual tantra that could be described as matriarchal, or valley, or yin, or bonding, or oxytocin-oriented. She does so through the lenses of anthropology and genetics and neuroscience, trenchant and pragmatic. Oh, how I wish that her text was required reading in every junior high school sexual education class for the way we choose to make love or masturbate and our choices in pornography and erotica and even fantasy have a profound effect upon each of our midbrains, dopamine pathways, and oxytocin pathways, and our mental health, and our physical health, and all our relationships, as well as our educational and vocational well-being. This, the endocrino, neurological, and emotional, and intellectual, and romantic, and social, and educational, and vocational, and developmental healing made available by the subtle and often G-rated techniques of Kareza Tantra or Virtual Panacea. Purchase this book from Amazon.com tonight. Uh, there's a paperback or read it through the free Kindle app on the digital device of your, of your choosing. Read it with your partner aloud before bed. Apply its teachings for no less than 28 consecutive days and watch your life change. Full disclosure. The Buddha Joy Meditation Co. makes no money from your purchase of Marnia Robbins' Cupid's Poisoned Arrow. So, this has been... This has been... This is a topic that makes many people very confused. And so if you have any questions before I close the live stream, Type in the chat, or better yet, ask me through the uh, Instagram live stream, and I'll be happy to answer your questions right now. And if not now, in the future, through Instagram direct message or YouTube comment. My friends, that brings us to the end of the live stream. If you have found any value in these live streams or podcasts or blog posts or class materials numerous and free to download, then please consider supporting uh, this channel through a, with a monthly donation by using the link in the description area below the video. Um, if, at this time, however, you cannot afford to do so, you can support the channel by subscribing and clicking the bell-shaped notification button. And every time you watch a video, click the thumbs up button as well as enter a comment. These things really help with the um, algorithm. This is a good time to dispel the myth of the greedy monk. For in the Tibetan tradition, Neither monks, nor yogis, nor even lamas are supported by monasteries. They are expected to uh, find their own support, their own patronage, from friends or relatives or strangers or students and those who can't become wandering homeless. My friends, I thank you for your time and your kind attention. Until next we meet, may you and yours be happy 
and healthy.